I'm Yolanda, and I'm an engineer on the developer relations team. Today, I'll show you how to write your first UI test using Jetpack Compose. We will test this calculator app and on the way learn about different testing APIs. We will fill in a formula and try to break the calculator by entering an invalid formula. Let's get started. Before we can write any tests, we need to go to the app's build.gradle file and add the required library dependencies. Then we right-click our Android test source directory, choose New, and create a Kotlin class. We'll call it Calculator Test. In the newly created class, we add a JUnit test rule. This test rule allows us to set the test content and interact with our app inside the test. A test class should always have a test rule defined. We also add a method with a test annotation to indicate that it should be run as part of our test suite. In the test, we use the test rule set content method to set the content of our screen to be our calculator. In here, we're in a composable context, so we can call any composable functions needed to set up our test scenario. If we run this test, we will already see the calculator in action. We can also see that our test succeeds. However, it's still not doing much and we didn't actually check anything. So let's change that. Our test rule contains different finder methods to search for elements on our screen. In Compose, elements on the screen are represented by nodes. So in our test, we can search for a node with the text string 1. In our calculator, this will match the element with the number 1 on it. When you find a node, you can call the different perform methods to perform actions on that node. In our case, let's click on the node. If we now run our test, it successfully finds and clicks the number one. Amazing. Let's make our formula a bit more complicated and add some more clicks. When we now run our test, it correctly clicks on one, plus, two, plus, and wait, Clicking the number three fails. Why is that? Looking at the error message, we can see that our test found two nodes that have the text three. Not only our button is matching, but also the result of the current calculation. We can fix this issue by creating a more complex matcher. Instead of using on node with text, we use a more generic on node. In it, we can use one of the has methods to create our matcher. We still want our element to have the text 3, so let's start with the has text matcher. Then we can use the end operator to add another matcher. In our case, we can use the has click action to only match clickable nodes. Our button will match this requirement, but our result won't as it's not clickable. Let's change our other matchers as well. Now, although this works, it gets a bit unwieldy. Instead of writing out the matchers each time that we need them, Let's extract them into variables that we can reuse throughout our tests. That's starting to look nice, but we still haven't verified anything. Let's look for the node that has a text 1 plus 2 plus 3. We can call different assert methods on it. In our case, let's verify that this node indeed exists. Congratulations, we made our first test. If for whatever reason our formula field doesn't work as expected, this test will fail, and you can investigate the issue. Now, we tested the happy path, but let's try to do an invalid action and verify that our app handles it gracefully. We will enter a percentage sign into a formula field and press the equal sign to try to perform that calculation. How will our app react? Wow, it shows a nice error message to tell the user that there's a format error. Let's validate that this format error is shown by finding a node with the text format error and asserting it exists. Then, when pressing the backspace to undo our mistake, we can validate that the error is correctly removed and the node doesn't exist anymore. Now, in this test, we don't really care about the actual string that we're showing. We could change it to validation error or just error, and our test should still work. So instead of matching on a hard-coded string, we should match on the string resource from our string's XML file instead. But accessing string resources means that we need access to an activity, and that's not default behavior for our Compose tests. To access the activity, we need to change our Compose rule to an 
Android Compose rule that references an activity to start before the test runs. Component activity is an empty activity that serves as a host for our Compose content. Now we have a working test that keeps working when the string changes. Looking at this test, there's another property that would be interesting to test. What if we want to verify that the error code is shown in this orange color? There's actually no method to assert the color of our text. To understand why, we have to understand a bit more about the concept of nodes in Compose. The nodes we match in our tests are so-called semantic nodes, and they're part of the semantics tree. Parallel to the UI tree that contains visual information of your app, the semantics tree is an alternative representation of the information on your screen, where each node describes the semantic meaning of a screen element. It contains properties such as text and content description, but also actions such as on click and set text. It also has a reference to its parent and to its children. The matchers in our tests use these properties to test the semantics of our UI. That's why we also call these tests semantic UI tests. In comparison, you can use so-called screenshot tests to verify visual properties. But that's a topic for another talk. And with this last bit of theory, I hope you learned something about UI testing in Compose. We barely scratched the surface, so here's some other resources on the subject. Now, start adding tests and subtracting bugs. <laughs>